So you wanna buy a motorhome? Well, here's the dirt. Welcome to Mr. Jack's journey. Doing this channel is about the bumps and bruises my wife and I encounter as we travel life around uh, Nashville and sometimes in our motor home. So I hope that y'all will go get your mom and them, y'all gather around and uh, let's have some fun. Sorry for that nasty beginning, but. What do you do when your RV is disgustingly dirty? Coming back from uh, Louisville, the roads were covered with salt and this thing is pathetic. I just want to show you what it's like trying to keep the blooming things clean. I bought our first motorhome. Uh, this is it. It's a Thor Four Winds. Uh, I forget the model number. Bought it about two years ago. To keep it clean, I would just drive it to the car wash and then I'd pull it about halfway in I'd wash uh, the first half of it. Now you have to be careful if you do this because they have these hoses that are attached to uh, a whirly gig thing up in the ceiling. And uh, yeah, I'd, I would drive this halfway in, I would wash the front of it, uh, then I would rinse it, then I would drive it the rest of the way in, and I would wash the back of it. This would cost me, oh, I would usually put in about $20 worth of quarters, but this car wash put in a credit card reader cut my cost out of about $13 to $14 to wash this thing because that was actual time. I wasn't just putting quarters in hoping that I had enough. So that's how I washed the first one, but I found an easier way. It looks any better, cleaner. I need a shower too. <laughs> so I'm here to Blue Beacon Truck Wash. I have to drive 22 miles to get over here to this. I've been in line for about 10 minutes. There are probably 15 trucks ahead of me. But this thing's gonna look darn good when it comes out of the truck wash. been at the truck wash for an hour and a half. You can see I'm still not, still not in. Uh, two trucks ahead of me. I just gotta get this thing clean. Okay, just one more. I'm next in the, next in the door. Well, I'm introducing a new segment to my videos. Uh, I know y'all don't come here thinking I've got any kind of advice to give, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do that today. You know, Sharon, I've been married almost 44 years, and people often ask me how how we've done it. Well, we've done we've worked on it a lot over the years, and uh, I remember one time we went to a marriage seminar, basically about about communication. I don't remember who the instructor was, but I can remember sitting there next to Sherry in this room full of, I don't know, a couple of dozen other people. And uh, I was having a tough time paying attention because of the sound of his voice. So I kind of nudged Sherry and I said, doesn't he sound a lot like Kermit the Frog? She just shushed me and said, is that all you're getting out of this? Would you please pay attention? Well, well Lord knows I was trying. But you know, kind of sat back in my chair and I listened to Kermit explain that communication was very important. And it's also important that husbands and wives know each other's likes and dislikes. And uh, as my mind was trying to wander all over the place, all of a sudden he said in a very authoritative tone, Men, 
You should know everything about your wife. You should even know her favorite flower. I, I got this. I know this. So I kind of leaned over, touched Sherry's arm, and I, you know, looked at her, my most loving look, and I said, I got this. It's Pillsbury, isn't it? <laughs>